I have 10 people in my house that I take care of. Groceries, everything is so darn expensive these days, and it's just hard to be able to keep everything paid. Our child support amount has been set at this price since I've been put on child support, and it's still hard to be able to maintain a household paying that amount and then to take more away from it. It just makes things harder. Is there anything that you have to pay for that's unique to your family, unlike what anybody else in this courtroom today would have been saying as well? The judge needs a legal reason for a child support deviation, and the burden of proof is on dad. It's the state's understanding that parents are in agreement that the, ch the children in this case are covered on government medical through the mother. And father's uh, guideline calculated cash medical amount would be $69. Um, the parents are in agreement that Mr. Nelson was the person previously ordered to pay support. And um, the state is asking for confirmation of those arrears in full with appropriate repayment. Uh, the main issue of disagreement, Your Honor, is with regard to current child support. Um, at this time, Your Honor, state is asking that and mother doesn't disagree with the state's request for guideline child support in the amount of, sorry, Your Honor, it went away from me, um, but I will get that to the court shortly. Uh, and I believe, Your Honor, it's going to basically boil down to Mr. Nelson seeking a, a deviation and the mother not being in agreement with anything other than guideline. All right. Thank you. All right, Mr. Nelson, here's the deal, sir. Uh, you've got to give me a legal reason that, I, that why I should deviate from what the legislature says I'm supposed to do in your case, sir. Uh, deviations are, uh, again, the burden of proof falls on you for the, for the reason for that deviation. And I need to uh, have somewhat of a legal reason to, to, to do so. Otherwise, the court has to go with what the guidelines are because that's considered to be what's in your children's best interest. And if you want me to do something that's not in their best interest, you got to show me the legal reason, sir, why. And again, it uh, kind of puts you at a disadvantage if you're not a lawyer, uh, but uh, it, it's left up to you to uh, get the court that information. So at this time, I'm going to go ahead and swear both parties in, let the state call you both as witnesses, and we'll see where this one goes. Did both of you saw me swear or affirm me? Testimony you're going to give here today is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth so help you. I do. All right, you're both officially under oath, uh, and the state may proceed with the testimony. Thank you. And ma'am, who are the children in this case? Uh, Lila Nelson and Chamber Nelson. How are you related to them? I'm their mother. Who is the father of these children? Christopher Nelson. Is Mr. Nelson the person who was previously ordered to pay child support in this case? Yes, ma'am. Were you able to hear my opening court, uh, statement to the court regarding your agreements and disagreements? Uh, yes, I believe so. Was that accurate, ma'am, as far as the issues you believe we were bringing to Judge Nelson's attention? Yes, ma'am. At this time, ma'am, how do your children have health coverage? Uh, right now, they're co covered under Medicaid. <clears throat> and you're comfortable maintaining that going forward? Yes, ma'am. And ma'am, are you aware of Mr. Nelson having any other minor children besides your two? Yes, he does. How many others, please? Uh, four. And is that the total or the number in addition? That's the number in addition. And ma'am, do you know whether those four children live in his household or if he pays support for them? Uh, I believe they, that they all live in his household, yes. And ma'am, are any of those children older than your two? No, ma'am. And uh, were you given a number, ma'am, for the child support since I'd already announced the cash medical as 69? Uh, yes. What was that amount, please? I believe, if I didn't lose it, I believe it was 690 is what I was told, and then that was before percentages were moved around and without the medical and without the rear. Okay. Got it, ma'am. And uh, did you know personally, Ms. Pruitt, what Mr. Nelson does for a living or what he earns? No, I do not. Okay. Uh, was there anything else, ma'am, you wanted the court to consider at this time? No, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Your Honor, I pass this witness. How are you related to the two children with Ms. Pruitt? Father. And sir, are you the person who was previously ordered to pay child support in this case? Yes. And sir, based on the state's records, would you agree that you are in arrears at this time? Yes, but uh, I'm curious about the, disagree uh, about the arrears amount. Yes, sir. So 
The amount that I'm showing on our records as of yesterday is $8,925.14. Would you agree that that's what our records show? That might be what y'all's records show. I can't agree or disagree with that. And sir, since the order was put into place where you were supposed to pay the state's disbursement unit, have you provided to Ms. Pruitt any direct payments that aren't reflected on our payment record? No. All right. Uh, Your Honor, I actually think the state sent this over as Exhibits 1, a 10-page financial activity report. Okay. Then, uh, again, I don't have the uh, – go ahead and uh, share that with your screen if you can at this time, Ms. Bongat. Based on your testimony a little while ago that you have not made any payments to Ms. Pruitt that wouldn't be reflected on this document, do you have any disagreement at this point that – the amount of $8,925.14 is accurate as far as your arrears? I'm not sure on that part. Um, the reason why I say that is uh, at one point we were looking at uh, trying to purchase a house and uh, the gentleman that was going over all of the financial reports um, said that my child support payment was at a, it was at like a, a $10,000 and some change amount, and it has stayed at that amount for over three years and hasn't decreased. Okay, here's the um, so sir, sir, stop, I'm stop, not going to stop, contest I'm that sorry. it's correct or not. All right, Mr. Nelson, I'm sorry. That's a bunch of, that's a, I'm sorry, that's what we call hearsay evidence, and that doesn't have anything to do with, with the money that's supposed to be coming through the state disbursement unit. I reviewed your order, and it says all payments that you're supposed to make in child support has to come through the state disbursement unit. This is their, this is their accounting showing what has come in according to their records. Is there any legal reason, sir, that this should not come into evidence to show what you've had paid and what you may have not paid, sir? No, sir. I wasn't understanding the full question on it in the first place. I apologize. That's okay. Again, you're not a lawyer and this is the way this sets up. But again, this is what shows that come, has come through there. And uh, originally, I think it showed that you owed, uh, there was $15,000 owed and you're down to eight. So obviously you're going, you've definitely uh, come a long way in this one, but it's still what it's, uh, it's owed at this time, sir. So I'm going to yeah, admit yeah. state's exhibit number one into evidence, and I'm going to allow the state to go ahead and proceed. Thank you. Mr. Nelson, um, was I correct in letting the court know that you have no problem with paying the cash medical support amount? It was just the matter of child support that you were disagreeing with? Correct. And so, sir, you understand that my colleague was looking at um, income you had self-reported based on an hourly rate and how many hours per week, correct? Correct. And was that um, $28 an hour, sir, 38 hours a week? Correct. And, sir, would you agree that if your employer didn't take anything out of your check, you would be seeing... Four thousand six hundred ten dollars and sixty-six cents per month, roughly. And was Miss Pruitt correct, sir, in stating that you have four other minor children, all of whom are younger than the two in this case? Yes. And so, sir, your total of minor children is six. Yes. And, sir, um, does the amount of six hundred and ninety-seven dollars as child support sound like what you may have been told earlier? I was under the impression that it was going to be around the $800 a month mark. Okay. And so, sir, the way that the math is done is we do give you credit for the four children in your household. We subtract the $69, so that's not part of the net resources. Those come out to 3801 And so, in this case, it's the 697 plus the 69 coming out to roughly 7 brain. Well, a little under eight. Um, but given those numbers, sir, did you still have a problem with paying guideline child support? I don't have a choice. <laughs> well, sir, this is your opportunity to let the court know what you disagree with, why you disagree with it, and then Judge Nelson gets to decide if you get to pay something other than 697 in child support. Yes, ma'am. I mean, my, my only... I, I don't have a, a legal argument to be able to present for my case on this. Uh, you know, I mean, the only reason why I was asking for any kind of relief in this was, you know, just based on the fact that I do have four kids. I mean, I, I have 10 people in my house that I take care of. 
groceries, everything is so darn expensive these days, and it's just hard to be able to keep everything paid. I mean, I'm, I understand that they're my children, and I love them, and I want to take care of them. I'm not trying to negate that. I, I mean, it, it's just our, our child support amount has been set at this price since I've been put on child support. And it's still hard to be able to maintain a household paying that amount and then to take more away from it. It just makes things harder. That, that was my my only plea to the judge was to, you know, to, to try and put that up. And Mr. Nelson, I'm not trying to bash or downplay any of the things you're mentioning, sir, but is there anything that you have to pay for that's unique to your family, unlike what anybody else in this courtroom today would have been saying as well? Probably not. And so, sir, what amount were you going to propose then if the court does consider your plea to take all of that into account, knowing that there's still a repayment towards what is owed on the case that needs to be set? I thought that with the uh, with the previous amount, there was a repayment amount that's been set in that uh, to bring the total to to what it previously was. Um, I mean, if I I would love to be able to stay where I'm at. Uh, I mean, I don't I don't think that's going to be possible, but. And sir, I think what you're referring to is back when you were ordered to pay two hundred and seventy seven dollars beginning June of twenty seventeen. There was a one hundred and forty dollar. Uh, sorry, sir. Uh, yes, ma'am. I was just going to add in the uh, the plus the arrears payment on that. It brought it up to like four nineteen a month. Yes, sir. So the math on that total would be roughly 417, but you were wanting that to be your total monthly obligation going forward? I was, yes, I was one, requesting to keep it as, as it was already previously set. And, sir, you understand that the 140 that was set just for the repayment was based on the judgment amount of the 15,060 and 44? I do now. And then, sir, with regard to current support payments, you would agree that your income has changed and actually increased since that order was done in 2017, correct? Yes, it has by a little bit. Okay. Uh, anything else, Mr. Nelson, you wanted the court to consider? No, ma'am, that's it. Thank you, sir. Your Honor, I pass this witness. All right, Mr. Nelson, uh, anything else you think you we want the court to know at this point, sir? No, Your Honor. All right, then. Uh, any other witnesses at this time, Ms. Bungat? None, Your Honor. All right, then. Um, anything else you want me to know, Ms. Pruitt? No, sir. All right, Ms. Nelson, I, I understand what you're telling me. Uh, but again, uh, I, like, I, like I've been saying all day to several folks, I've got to have a legal reason to do so. And obviously, uh, this is an old order, and it, sh it could have been uh, changed years ago, probably. Uh, but at this point, the mother uh, is entitled to that amount. It's in the best interest of the kids that I order it. Uh, and uh, uh, again, because like I say, it looks like this is from 2017. So uh, it's supposed to be done every three years. And we're coming in at seven years now. So uh, it, uh, the court's having a hard problem uh, deviating from that, sir. So again, I've got to order what the guy, the court is based on what I've heard here today. I've got to order what the guideline child support is going to be going forward. Uh, I've got to, uh, 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 obviously, the cash medical is by agreement. Uh, I've got a uh, uh, arrears of $8,000, which means the uh, interest every month on that is a minimum of $40. Uh, how are the kids in this case, ma'am? Uh, 17 today and 15. All right. And when is the 17-year-old graduate from high school? Uh, next year. She's a junior this year. Okay. All right, then. So what I'm looking at doing is then I'm going to keep, I'm going to order the repayment on the uh, 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 judgment amount, uh, the least cover the interest. Uh, normally, I'm supposed, I normally order 50 plus, uh, uh, well, the interest plus 50. But based on what I've heard here today, I'm only going to order the interest plus 20. Because when the oldest child emancipates next year, uh, your child, the child support won't go down substantially, but the, um, uh, uh, the child support goes down. But the money uh, coming in will remain the same to reduce that unpaid child support judgment down. So I, 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 uh, the original was set at 100 plus, sir. So I'm going to take it down to 60 this time. And then next year when the oldest child emancipates, then uh, uh, you, you'll start hitting that down and be able to reduce that down with a more uh, a, a higher payment. But for right now, I'm trying to keep you. I'm trying to. I'm trying to keep it balanced and try to give you as much of a break as I can. Uh, so that's what I look at doing as far as the uh, uh, judgment amount, Ms. Bongat. 
is a, re a repayment of sixty dollars a month start the first day of uh, of uh, uh, March and guideline child support and the agreed to amount of cash medical going forward. Again, in being in conformity with the uh, uh, Texas Family Code uh, for guideline child support. Again, sir, uh, I understand it's 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 a lot of money, but uh, uh, the, the legislature says this is what I'm supposed to do, and uh, unless I've got a, a legal reason not to do it, I've got to do it. So that's what the court's going to have to rule at this time. Uh, so uh, uh, is there anything else specifically I need to rule on, Ms. Mungat? Sorry, Your Honor, I forgot to ask about costs, but does the court have a ruling in this case? Oh, he's he's reduced this down tremendously. I'll, I'll waive court costs. Yes, Your Honor. Is there uh, any, anything else then, Ms. Mungat, as far as uh, the court's ruling? No, Your Honor. All right, Ms. Pruitt, questions, ma'am? Anything else? Uh, no, sir. That's it. Mr. Nelson, questions? Anything else, sir? No, sir. Thank you for your compassion, Your Honor. All right. Good luck, sir, and good luck, ma'am. And, uh, and uh, we're officially off the record, and y'all free to go. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Your Honor. Bye bye.